Hey you folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, it's almost 1 o'clock, 12.6 degrees Celsius, 78% humidity, a new high, right? So it is June 2nd, Tuesday, 54.6 degrees. What am I up to today? Well, you know, some people think of getting wealthy. Some of you younger folks, maybe even some of the folks my age, maybe some of the folks even older than I am, all you think about is girls. But uh, what do I think about? I think about how to make dead Hondas run. So as I was thinking about this, I'm saying, man, what happens if anybody who has a junk Honda floating around could take themselves just a few minutes and hack themselves together a universal ignition kit. Something such that when you look at this kind of mess, you say to yourself, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It does not matter that the wiring harness is all screwed up. Right? I can make that bike run. You are so confident that I could do this. Piece of cake. You guys remember, I started with this, which is a 12-volt universal CDI. Good tool for troubleshooting. Makes life easy. I mean, you hook these two up to the pulse generator. You know, the old blue-white, blue-yellow. Hook that to the green on the pulse generator or to the case. Hook that to the case and hook up the spark plug wire. Turn it on and you have ignition. By the way, inside of that, just quickly, I put this thing in there, right? The little pigtail to plug into this thing, and the wires are all color-coded. That's the coil that I put in there. The on and off switch with the little light on the end of it because I thought that was cool. You guys could see what they cost. That's the battery holder. I bought more than one because just in case I wanted to build more of them. And the box, right? So that's this whole shoot match other than a few pieces of wire and some alligator clips that I cut up. Right? How much did it cost? For a single box it was eight bucks. I bought multiples, battery holder a dollar. Switch, $3, um, what is that, pigtail, $10, CDI, 16 bucks. another 10 bucks for the um, coil, came out to about 50 bucks. there you go. And just quickly, if you wanted to wire this thing, this is how you wire it. So this box is very nice. The only problem is you're stuck with an advanced unit, you're stuck with batteries, and quite honestly this box is always flopping around and falling off and causing me grief like that. So after that, the next generation I came up with was this. This is a pit bike wiring harness, right? Your standard 185, 200 square plug, um, a CDI unit. This also, um, what you want to do is buy the small CDI unit. This uses the smallest CDI unit, right? As you look at the various ones, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah, I lost my bag with the uh, parts from this guy in it, but I'd show you they, they get bigger. What you want is the smallest one for this harness. And for this guy, believe it or not, you want the biggest one. What it looks like is it's the big guy. And I hacked this together and I was all pleased with myself because it works beautifully. Then I was thinking for some of you guys, you may not have access to eBay, right? You may not you know, have the funding for eBay, but what you might have is a backyard full of crap, right? Much like I do. So, this is a wire harness. 
off of a 125. One of like these guys, right? You can see the electric starter, the switch, right? So anyway, this is um, a 185, 200 square plug CDI unit, right? But look what you got. I just plugged it in there, right, from my junk pile. And then you got the black and red wire. Where does that go? Stator, not that hard. Blue and yellow wire, where does that go? Pulsar. Green wire, where does that go? Ground. Black, yellow wire, where does that go? That goes to the ignition coil. Um, this has a black wire. Some of them are black and white. What is that? That's your kill switch. Don't hook that to anything because then you kill it. When you're hooking up to a coil, if it looks like this, this is where the uh, black, let me just be positive, this is where the black yellow goes, right? And this is where ground goes. So what you do is you put a little um, round lug on it and you make sure you get good contact to ground. As a matter of fact, I'd put the ground on that side, put a little spade connector on it, hook to that with, with your... Um, black yellow right you got your cdi all rigged up here all nice you might have to have a few different wires coming off the of ground because you have to make sure you put ground to the case if you don't put ground to the case it doesn't know to spark right this hooks up to the pulser and it's that simple you just build yourself a nice wiring harness right take note whether you have a pit bike right look at that cdi blue white and green goes to ground right green goes to ground black white that's the run stop switch you close that switch and the thing stops running black red stator black yellow goes to the pulser um the one bike that i wanted to take 30 seconds and look at was the 200 ES 1984 200 ES it is a round plug CDI right but if you're hooking this up it doesn't matter it matters not at all you basically disconnect the wires as they come out of the engine they unplug down here right behind this thing they unplug and you just slip your, you know, blue white in with the blue white. You slip your red black in with the red black. Plug green into the green ground. You got your other green right up here. And I recommend hooking one of the one of these grounds up to the case just to make sure you got a rock solid ground. And you pull the string and your engine's running. It's that simple. How much easier could you get? Right? That's where you want to be with these things. You want to make sure no matter how hacked up your wiring harness is, you can just walk up to it. I mean, look, that's all there is. How easy is this thing to use? Let me show you. It's, just, it's raining, so I'm not, like, getting all the great things done I need to get done. This is basically a pit bike harness with a square plug. Chinese CDI on it, and I'm walking up to a quad. Wow, look at me walking up to a quad. Quad wiring harness is disconnected, right? This wiring harness is screwed up seven ways to the moon here, right? It's all wrecked. So, what am I going to do? Let me just put the camera right here, like this, so you guys could watch me, right? No magic. First, spark plug. Plug it right in. Done. Next, right green wire. I'm going to hook that right up to the case with the alligator clip. Bang. Done. Next, blue white. Plugging that right in. 
with the blue yellow done right red black in with the red black right so stators all hooked up everything's happy everything's good I got a green one here let's plug in an extra green one just for some fun never hurts to make sure you got everything grounded beautifully now make sure I got gas to the carburetor Choke. Guys, that's how hard it is. That's that's how difficult it is, right? So any bike, you all have floating around with an ignition problem. You can either hack your own one together. I showed you the diagrams, told you what parts you need. You could go to eBay and get the parts, right? Piece of cake, you can start anything. I just started a quad, right? I'm sure that ignition system would also work on the um, on this guy right I'm not going to take it apart at the moment and show you but I'm sure once again I could set that up to use that or I can use the 12 volt ignition system right big $50 investment here so go to your junk box dig up a coil dig up a harness Get a square box 200S. The square box 200S is the most universal ignition system in the absolute world. Um, they make them in China, or you could get one of the old ones. Doesn't matter. It's good to make sure you got a good one, but um, and if you are buying one of the China ones, remember it is small. How small? That's my thumb, and I could just about cover up the whole thing with it. That small little box, right? Piece of cake. You just rig it up, a couple of outer gator clamps, a couple of spade connectors, a couple of round connectors, and you got yourself a, a system that you can basically start almost anything with. I'm sure there are plenty of us out there who would always be stymied. Why won't this start? Why won't this start? Why won't this start? Well, there you are. Um, once you build one of these, get it working, know what you have, um, and you, uh, and guys, if you make one and it doesn't work, shoot a video of it, shoot a video of the wiring diagram, show me the whole bit carefully, I'll walk you through it, not that hard, once again, piece of cake, 25 bucks or 50 bucks for the 12 volt guy, right, I'll show you how to do it, but once you have that, none of this matters anymore you could get your bike started if you rig up the whole thing and the bike doesn't start now you have to ask yourself the questions what's the resistance resistance of my pulse generator right you go from ground to the end of the pulse generator or across the pulse generator and you should see somewhere around 30 ohms stator you should see somewhere between two and three hundred ohms right um, I was screwed on one stator and it was a stator for a big red that uh, material got between the flywheel and stator and uh, chewed the whole stator up but the resistance still showed up between two and three hundred ohms but that's because it was all mingled with crap it didn't mean that it was pulsing like it was supposed to so I did get boned on the stator the one nice thing about the 12 volt box you eliminate the stator with the 12 volt box right you just hook up these two wires here and another one to ground and one to the spark plug and you're running 
that easy, guys. There are a million of these things out there, well, maybe not a million, maybe more than that, that have electrical problems. So if you can figure out your way around an electrical problem, you could get yourself a good deal on a bike. Um, these kit CDI units, so to speak, they work on everything except stuff with points. For that old stuff with points, one would have to do something else. I think, quite honestly, one could probably just um, hook a 9-volt battery with the neutral to ground and uh, send the, um, the positive, I mean, put a, put a battery to ground, positive to one side of the points, right, and then the positive would come off the points and go to the pulser box, I think that might just trigger it. I think I think one could do it with as little as a 9 volt battery um, because that pulse that pulse isn't very strong so um, I think don't know haven't tried it but I think that's something I'll try in the future if I run into something that I'm having trouble with points but if one takes it the next step whether I do it or somebody else out there and does it as extra credit and gets that to work now you're bringing in every Briggs and Stratton, every Tecumseh, right, Bolins, everything with points you get to run. I think these China engines, the Predators or um, Harbor Freight, whoever's making their engine this week, I think they use a CDI ignition, and I'm pretty sure the portable boxes will work with them also. I don't know what the Briggs and Stratton has in it, that big Briggs and Stratton. If I had a guess, it's probably a Hall effect or a pulser. Well, Hall effect won't work. A Hall effect just gives you resistance. A pulser actually gives you an, uh, a, a voltage pulse. Um, if it's a Hall effect, you probably need some voltage to trigger it, like that 9 volt I described. Um, if it's um, a pulser, it'll, it'll work with all this junk also. So... Guys, it's a tool for your toolbox. It's some way of getting a bike running. Once again, assuming you walk up to one of these rigs and the engine sound, it has compression, right? You put the China carb on there for 25 bucks. You hack yourself an ignition system for another 25 bucks. For 50 bucks, you took care of the two big problems. Then all you have to do is worry about if it smokes and if the clutch and transmission are any good. And, of course, that it holds oil. Um, it's nice when they hold oil and they don't valdez all over the place for you. All right, guys, questions, please get back to me. Thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Sorry, all these long videos this week. Um, my buddy 231 is, is, is probably already walked away. But, um, guys, remember, keep your feet down, keep your head up. Get out there and enjoy all your days, even when it's running. Try to get something done. Thanks for watching, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you all soon. Once again, enjoy your time. Bye now.